てるてるてる。You know the most useful tool in the world for figuring stuff out is an ancient lost secret. It's called Platonic or Pythagorean. It doesn't make any difference. Platonic is Pythagorean. Platonic retroduction. You make definitive statements when people love to use the word anti gravity. People love to throw that word around. It's like the same reason people throw around the word magnetism and polarity. And then where's one thing I've proven after these many years is nobody knows what the hell they're talking about when they use the word polarity or when they're using uh, the word magnetism or when they're using the word quantum. I hate it when people say that because quantum doesn't refer to anything. You just put the word quantum in front of something. I mean, it's ridiculous. I, it's amazing how many things people have stuck that stupid word in front of. Um, just ask them what, or to ask them what a field is. A lot of people love scientists specifically, and scientists are not scientists today, but they are as mathematician. A true science, a scientist in the Aristotelian or Platonic sense, is something totally different. Those people were people in search of truth and facts based upon logic, evidence, and retroduction. Specifically, we can talk about anti, when people use the word anti gravity erroneously. They don't know what the hell they're talking about. Let's define anti-gravity. When you're talking about gravity, you're talking about the loss of weight, right? One implies the other. People talk, and weight is neither is it an absolute nor does it exist. Just as waves don't exist. Sure, waves exist. Scientists love talking about waves, waves. You know, waves of what? Waves of what? <laughs> God. Let's talk about anti-gravity just for a second. And let's define what people are really talking about without thinking because nobody has their brains turned on anymore because nobody knows how to think. People use the word anti-gravity are talking about not only the absence of weight, uh -huh, but the complete opposite of mutual mass acceleration. By the way, masses never accelerate towards each other. They accelerate towards a null point, right? And it's not curved space-time. Time is not a thing. A time is a measure of magnitudes, and space has absolutely no properties, which Nikola Tesla famously said, and he's correct. Space has attributes, but it has no properties. Objects are never accelerating towards one another. They're accelerating towards a no field pressure mode, mode node. Excuse me. Let me restate that. Towards a no pressure node in counter space. You can even see that underneath the supercell if you bring to opposite polarity magnets together. They're not accelerating towards themselves. There's this actual little tiny black null that's created between the two and they're accelerating towards that, not towards each other. Now from conventional ape-like understanding, which is what human beings are today. They're not thinkers. Human beings are still very slightly evolved apes. They think that masses accelerate towards one another. So when people use the word anti-gravity, let's be succinct because the devil is in the details and you actually have to have a discerning and discriminating mind and understanding when people say anti-gravity, they're talking about weight. Okay? So let's define weight because weight is no different than talking about a shadow or uh, talking about um, something emitting light or talking about polarity. Nobody knows. Weight. Okay? Weight. Vectored acceleration. Weight doesn't exist. What do you mean it doesn't exist? Just as waves don't exist, people are reifying something as something else because a wave is not what something is, it's what something does. In other words, a wave is an attribute of something else. My hand is waving, something's waving, the flames are waving, right? This, a wave is not a thing. What? We can make it to weight. Let's make a definitive statement. Since weight is not definitive, when people say any gravity, they're talking about weight. Weight is location specific. If you only have two objects in the universe, if object B instantaneously reappears at half the distance to object A, right? Then what happens to the weight? I thought nothing moved faster than the speed of light. If weight changes instantaneously relative to position or location, then weight is not a property possessed by either object A or object B. This retroductive observation is undeniable. It's an absolute fact. Weight is also too medium specific. And we're talking about we uh, medium. Okay? 
where we're talking about fields, okay, we're talking about dielectricity, electrostatics, and magnetism. Specifically, everything is electrical, but when we say electrical, we have to, have to understand that electricity is a hybrid of dielectricity and magnetism, five times psi equals Q and Planck of electrification. Electricity is a hybrid. So ultimately, we're talking about two modalities of electrostatics and magnetism, right? Gravity doesn't exist. The only thing that actually differentiates out gravity from so-called magnetic attraction, right, is the principle that one is point nonspecific acceleration and the other one is coherent point specific or point acceleration there's no such thing as magnetic attraction magnetism by definition is increasing force in motion i.e. centrifugal divergence magnetic attraction is as stupid as saying dehydrated water for example just as a perfect analogy to make it clear in your head since weight is medium specific let's say for example you asked a little a five uh, a five-year-old girl right to move um, I don't weigh, I weigh 254 pounds, okay, not me. You ask a five-year-old girl to move a 500-pound fat, uh, fat person, right? Oh, that's impossible, right? Hey, little girl, there's this really heavy dude over, dude over here. He's 500 pounds. Let's see you move him. Never going to happen, is it? Never. Okay, let's change that scenario. Wait, let's wait. You know, that dude's 500 pounds. Try about weight, right? Weight is medium-specific. You take that same heavy guy and you throw him in the water, right? You, you toss him in the swimming pool and then you get the little girl with her floaties. Yeah, and she's on the kitty end of the, you know, where her little legs can touch. The five-year-old uh, girl could easily move that 500-pound person, couldn't she? Yeah, because the medium changed. What changed? The medium changed. So if weight has no bearing or is it a possession or attribute of object A or object B and the location changes instantaneous and therefore weight too changes instantaneously, then weight is not an attribute of either object A or object B. And if the medium changes, then the weight changes. I mean, how much does a 500 pound, if a, you know, if you stick a 500 pound dude in the water, like, Say like four foot of water, you know, just his neck is sticking up out of the water, right? Yeah, four foot water, he's six feet tall, for example, and he stands on the scale. How much does that 500 pound person weigh? He's in a completely different medium, by the way. How much does he weigh? Doesn't, doesn't say 500 pounds on that scale at the bottom of the pool, does it? Weight is also too vector specific. Actually explaining that one is slightly more difficult, but it's a proven fact that if you change the approach vector, right? A curvilinear vector. I don't know if you actually dropped one of your a coin in one of those funnels and it goes around and it's kind of amusing and it goes faster and faster and faster. If you actually do a trochoidal uh, vectored acceleration towards an object, then weight changes. It actually, this is the reason why comets can sit there and spin and spin and go around the sun, you know, endless numbers of times essentially and not actually fall into the sun. Explaining that one takes actually a lot more time than I have in this video. Weight is also too magnitude specific. The actual curve linear acceleration based upon the vector of the magnitude, not the mass, when we say mass we're talking about and referring weight, but the magnitude of object A or object B, weight is also different. It is also too affected by phase. Explaining that one actually takes a long time. So weight undeniably is location specific, medium specific, vector specific, magnitude specific, both of object A or object B or object A or object uh, uh, B, and it is phase specific, all of which these uh, five different uh, principles are true of weight. Then we talk about anti-gravity relative to weight, the mutual mass acceleration of an object mutually towards and not towards another, but towards a null pressure field, a null, a null field pressure point, excuse me, there we go, is not definitive. Anti-gravity is not only plausible, and it's far more than plausible, it's an undeniable absolute. Since everything is, and I use this term loosely, everything is electrical, anti-gravity is not only plausible, it's an undeniable absolute. There is absolutely no denying this. Um, by the way, if you ever want to stop by my house and show you a neat little device that actually feels weightless that I created about four years ago, let me know. I got three of them. One of them is in safe, safe hands, one of them's in the safe, and one of them I keep out. I, I mess with it every day. Um, 
I, I hate it when people say it. I, I hate the word meditation. I hate the word waves, and I hate the word uh, weight. Why? Because you're so fat and you, you don't like your weight. That's actually another reason why I don't like the word weight. <laughs> but weight is not an absolute, nor is it a property of any object or the property of two mutual objects accelerating towards a null pressure point between the two, never towards each other. Objects never accelerate towards each other. That's the same BS people think that magnets accelerate towards one another. Magnets never accelerate towards one another. They're actually, and you can see this underneath the supercell, like I said. Um, but when we say anti-gravity, let's be specific here, and people need to refer to weight. Now, if you null out the weight to zero by changing not only the location, but specifically the medium, and the medium that we're talking about is a field medium. This means that this mutual mass acceleration is the shrinking of, two, of a single toroidal field between two objects towards a null pressure point in counter space. And this is the null mode point or pressure point between objects. So not only do you have to null it out, do you actually have to reverse it, just kind of like so-called magnetic repulsion. And magnetic repulsion, by the way, is real magnetism, but uh, so-called magnetic attraction does not exist because that is not magnetism by definition but causing an object to lose all weight and then mutually so be repelled between those two objects, which is what denotation and connotation imply of the term anti-gravity is an undeniable absolute. When people say, is anti-gravity real? And of course it's real. Everything is electrical by nature. And weight is not a property of any object. It is location-specific, medium-specific, vector-specific, magnitude-specific, and phase-specific. This means with the correct geometric charge, electrostatic specifically, you can not only null out weight, but cause mutual deceleration or mutual acceleration away. Of course, acceleration actually implies increasing inertia and energy. Uh, but we use the term, or I'm using the term acceleration loosely in the, in the sense of accelerating or moving. We're actually talking about a force vector here, however. We're talking about movement and force away from another thing. That's Because you, this is an issue between field theory and uh, conventional thinking. We talk about acceleration, we think of like you know putting the pedal on the gas and accelerating down the road, which is expending energy, i.e. gas. But when we speak of acceleration, we're actually not talking about... Uh, release of energy. We're talking about uh, uh, mutual mass acceleration towards a null field point and that is not the release of energy nor is it a force. It's just the opposite of that. But the force to move away once you've actually nulled out something's weight relative to something else. Since the weight is not a property of either object A or object B, nulling that out with the correct electrostatic field of great magnitude is not only plausible or possible, it's an undeniable absolute. It's a logical absolute. I mean, of course it is. Everything is electrical. So I point you out to the fact that people, what people think is non-magnetic. I mean, in a strong enough magnetic field, I don't know if you've seen this before, they, they levitate frogs, living frogs, strawberries, blueberries, any sort of thing you could imagine, you know, with a strong enough applied field. Well, that's not magnet. Well, everything is magnetic, you know. When people too use the term magnetism, they aren't thinking correctly because they don't know what magnetism is. Magnetism is not a property of an object. Magnetism is said of the point source or field coherency that exists relative to the object and the field that surrounds it. Um, but that's a matter for another discussion, which I've actually already made endless videos about. But anyway, yes, when we talk about anti-gravity, we're talking about weight. But when we talk about weight, we actually have to define what it is. And by defining weight, we know that anti-gravity, so-called, so to say, is an undeniable absolute. Um, it, it simply is. That's not my feeling or opinion or belief. It's an absolute undeniable. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'm going to apply a platonic retroduction to the... Uh, conundrum of weight and anti-gravity.